was only nine months ago that this family lost their father and Dana lost her husband and her best friend. I mean, he, he was everything. My kids are there, my family's there, but it's, it's different, you know? It's not the same as your, your, your soulmate. Times have been really tough for these guys in the last year, but the one thing that's really kind of gotten them through is, uh, is their faith. He was a missionary to the brokenhearted. He, he wanted to be there for the hurting, for hurting people. That's what a pastor does. For the last 20 years, the White family has always put their community before themselves and they sacrificed a lot. John White, the dad, was pastor at a local church. For years, they lived a simple life in the church parsonage. And then, about nine months ago, everything changed. It was the morning of the White's 19th wedding anniversary. It should have been an absolutely perfect day. But during John's workout routine, he collapsed. John White, the pastor, suddenly died of a massive heart attack. John was, he was a tremendous preacher. He was one of my best friends. When he walked into the room, it was just an awesome feeling that you got to be in his presence. He was a kind-hearted man. If he could give something to somebody to help them out make their life better, whether it was a sacrifice on his end, he didn't care, he did it. John was my hero. The way he was my hero was the way he loved people. The way he so compassionate, he'd stumble over himself to get to the phone because it might be somebody that needed him. He just cared about his family a whole lot. It's every, all he ever wanted to do was give us anything we wanted, and he couldn't really, oh, you know, always, but, but he always tried. Whenever you were sad or something, he would always be the one there for you and to come and you know, make you feel better. So Dana lost her husband, and the kids lost their father. And because of the nature of John's job, the family lost their home. That's the thing about living in a parsonage. It's provided by the church for the pastor and his family. But with John gone, they had to move out to make room for the new pastor. So it was a definite situation where I needed to relocate. The problem was, they had no other home to go to. So the church rallied around the family and raised as much money as they could. And with their help, Dana bought a youth trailer and a piece of land. Well, this is the trailer house I purchased. It's a double wide. It's phenomenal to see this project happened because it's a big thing for me um, to provide a home for my family. But guys, that trailer, it's in really bad shape. Right now it's an office. It's kind of been gutted to transform it into a house, but we've kind of come to the end of our road of what we're able to get done. It's just really small. That's the biggest thing. There's only one bathroom and there's like four girls and a guy. We have holes in our roof. We have our carpet's not even complete. Walls just sheetrock. My kids, they've been in a very unstable situation. And since I became provider and protector, they've not had a lot of security. These are people that have always helped others. And even after all they've been through, they're still giving people. I'm drawing from the strength that John gave me in the past. I'm drawing from his teachings, the things he taught us, the principles he put into our lives. That's what I'm trying to live out now. And I would like to ask ABC to step in and, and help my family, help my children, help us to get our feet set back down on solid ground and be able to get back to our mission of serving other people. Hi, ABC! We're a blue Baptist church and we nominate the John White family for a free makeover home edition. Well, that's where we come in. Now, John's church has done everything they can for Dana and the kids, and they still want to help. So they're asking us to give this family the home they desperately need. So put your hands in here, people. Are you with me? Yes. Well, then let's do it. It's Sunday morning. They're in church. I can't think of a better place to surprise this family than in their own church. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you? so shocked. <laughs> they didn't know where we came from, how we got there. Dana just kind of collapsed. All the kids started crying. Come on, guys, come on up here. The place just erupted. There was just so much joy. You could tell that congregation loves the White family. Hi, sweetie, how are you? It was almost like everyone just went, 
like this sigh of relief. We're here to make home your house. It was a perfect setting to surprise Dana and her five children. I know everyone uh, loved John a lot. He seems like he was a pretty amazing guy. We didn't get a chance to meet him. What was your dad like? He was always there and he was my protector. But I miss the most about my dad, so. We always played a lot of games. Nothing is sadder than to listen to a child talk about the loss of a parent. He just kisses. And I'll never forget Zeb, who said he misses his dad's kisses. It was clear that he was such a strong influence, such a, a powerful moving force in this community. Right now, I'm kind of like overwhelmed and, and whoosh, I think I'll go home and fall down. But <laughs> Thank you. I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. I know it's been some really tough times, but I'm hoping that things are going to get better from now on. You want to hear some really good news? <laughs> <laughs> You guys are going on vacation for a week, and you guys are going to a place called the Hilton Longboat Key off the coast of Florida. But we've got a lot to do. Well, we need to kind of take a look at that trailer where you've been staying and see what we can do about it, which means we're going to need to take a little bus ride. Are you ready? White family, let's take a bus ride. All right, everybody off. So that's where you guys are living, right? This is it. So here's what I think we ought to do. White family, you guys show me the inside of this thing. Design team, yes. we got a week. Let's get a good plan, right on. okay? Right, let's do yeah. it. Let's so guys, show me the trailer. Let's go. So this is the trailer and this is the step. Yeah, this is kind of a doozy here. You gotta really know what you're doing when you're coming out of this thing, huh? <laughs> wow. Uh, first thing that hit you when you walked in the door was Wow, this isn't really a house at all. It feels kind of like an office. Office, yeah. yeah. That's because that's what it was. We were trying to convert it, just haven't got it done yet. John and his family were living in the parsonage at the church. And when he passed away, the family then had to find a new place to live because the church had to make room for the new pastor. We never really had a lot to begin with, so when the bottom drops out on a little, yeah. Their whole world had been pulled out from underneath them. Now the church did everything they could. They did fundraisers and bake sales and raised as much money as they could to help the whites find new housing. This is nothing like where you guys were living before, is it? I mean... No. Dana did the absolute best that she could. She bought some land and unfortunately she couldn't afford anything except an office trailer. They hadn't really even unpacked yet. There were books stacked on the floor. We had a library in the church office where John kept all the books. So they mean a lot to you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those books meant more to John than so many material things because he just loved knowledge. Now, did this come from the old house? Yeah, that's that's been our table about 16 years. John fell in love with this table, bought it for 10 bucks, and it was our family table all these years. So it's part of the family. Would you say this is important that it goes into the house? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think a modification of that would be wonderful. It was only nine months ago that this family lost their father, and Dana lost her husband and her best friend. I mean, he, he was everything. My kids are there, my family's there, but it's, it's different, you know? It's not the same as your, your, your soulmate. Times have been really tough for these guys in the last year, but the one thing that's really kind of gotten them through is, uh, is their faith. He was a missionary to the brokenhearted. He, he wanted to be there for, the hurting, for hurting people. That's what a pastor does. She learned so much from John that she wants to take all of that and continue to give and to continue to spread the love. I see this as an awesome responsibility to carry on. Has there been a moment that it actually felt like it was a home or has it always kind of felt like, like you're still just in an office here? It feels like an office to me. No closets and stuff is an office. So. Oh, so you don't have any closets? No closets and we don't have showers here. What? Yeah. It actually had no shower, one bath, no hot water, no insulation. So you've only got plywood floors. This is subflooring. Yeah, yeah. No, I keep hearing the floors like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won't fall through. I've checked it all out. Okay, so. good. That's good. So everything inside that trailer just looks so temporary. I don't even see a stove in there. No, we don't have one yet. They didn't even have a stove. How do you cook any food in here? 
We don't. We don't. We don't yet. <laughs> it was just unacceptable. It wasn't it wasn't a place you'd want to spend any time. Certainly not where you'd want to raise your family. So you guys all share this bedroom, right? Yeah. Wow. Three of the girls were actually sleeping in a triple decker bunk bed. Are you kidding me? You guys all sleep on, on this thing? Yeah. And Esther was actually sandwiched in the middle. Is it just me, or this seems like it might be a little tough? Ah. You guys really all line up like this? Yeah. <laughs> when you wake up and hit your head, that's gotta hurt. Ow. They were like shelving units, which I'm sure were fun when they were three little girls, but it's not fun when you're 12, 14, and 16. Is there a point that you uh, don't really enjoy sharing your room with everyone? I don't like it. <laughs> so, Zeb, this is your room, right? Yep. And then there was Zeb, who had his own room, because he's like the only guy. Is this the ideal room you've always wanted? No. If we can make some changes here, can you tell me what those things should be? I like to have hot water, you know, in the closet. You guys seem like the kind of people who just don't really want to ask for much. Never. Is that the way he was? Yeah. He never asked for help unless he absolutely had to. His dad left a big void, I think, in the family, and it's really tough shoes to fill. And I think Zeb feels that pressure now. I can't imagine how overwhelmed he must feel. That's so much to deal with at any age, but at 15, it must be really hard. And so you guys are sharing a room. Yeah, Mom and Sarah. That's <laughs> that, you're also sharing a bunk bed, obviously. The way they were living just really wasn't right for anyone. It was definitely, you felt like this family was in transition. Obviously, there's been a lot of sadness and a lot of crying going on the last nine months. I think that could change if you guys didn't constantly have to come back to this. Yeah, it'll be a whole lot easier once we get a house that's our home. Is there anything in here, though, that is important to you guys and you want to make sure you keep? John's clothing. And she mentioned that, well, she really would like to keep some of John's clothes because eventually what she'd like to do is actually make some quilts out of them for the kids. That way they've got something tangible, something they can hang on to and say, hey, this was dad. Dana's got a lot on her plate. I don't think there's any time in the near future that she's going to be doing quilting, so let's do that for her. And hopefully we'll be able to make maybe that happen for her while she's gone. That's the idea.